Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dr. Dawson, and today we are going to talk about feline upper respiratory tract infections. So imagine that you have a cat uh, that you see walking down the street and they turn into a vet clinic. Now this cat is on a leash, and I know that's a little bit strange and um, it's hard to imagine, but it usually looks a little bit like this, and um, it is usually hilarious when it does happen. And it does, it does occasionally, but it is funny when it does. Now, once this cat is in the vet clinic, the vet takes a look at it, does a full physical exam. So it starts out, takes a look at the mouth, takes a look at the eyes, takes a look in its ears, feels and listens to its heart and lungs, and feels its GI tract and its whole abdomen, feels pulses, looks at all of the feet, looks at the tail, looks for any skin conditions, and assesses the patient as a whole. So things that the vet finds are some effects to the upper respiratory tract. They see some ulcerations on the tongue and on the gums, which are little sores, red areas where the tissue is basically has been taken away a little bit. They see some discharge so that's like goopy gunk from their nose and from their eyes, as well as maybe a little bit of an increased lung sound on auscultation or listening with a stethoscope. So one other thing that the vet finds is the reason that this cat was being dragged in and wouldn't walk. And that's because it had ulcerations on its feet or sores on its feet, paw pads specifically. So what is the cause of these type of infections and this kind of a disease? Well, to answer that question, there's a little bit of a complicated answer, so stick with me. We'll go through a couple other cases, including of a cat that uh, we had come into our clinic recently that had a very, very severe upper respiratory tract infection. And basically we saved it from death. It was almost dead and we'll get into details in a little bit. There are two main viral diseases that are typically going to cause an upper respiratory tract infection. The first one is feline rhinotracheitis virus, otherwise known as feline herpes virus one. And it's just what it sounds like. It's a type of herpes virus and it causes an infection of the rhino, meaning nose, tracheitis, and which is the trachea, uh, which is the upper airway. Um, it's the tube that connects from the mouth down into the lungs. The other virus is feline Khaleesi virus. Now feline Khaleesi virus is a really kind of annoying name and it doesn't really tell us a lot about the virus. But suffice to know that it also causes an upper respiratory tract infection. Now, feline, feline rhinotracheitis virus, otherwise known as feline herpes, I'll just call it herpes virus from now on because it's a little bit simpler to say. This virus is the most common virus that we see in cats that have an upper respiratory tract infection. And then the next most common is the feline Khaleesi virus. Some other types of bacteria and viruses that are a part of what we call the feline respiratory disease complex. That's a really fancy name that basically denotes that there are multiple organisms that are affecting the pathology related to this disease. So we have multiple organisms that are causing a single disease and they tend to work kind of in concert together. So the other organisms that are part of this feline respiratory disease complex include the chlamydia felis, um, or chlamydophilia felis actually, as well as a mycoplasma, which I'm not gonna get too much into detail about, and a rheovirus. So there's basically a whole host of different bacteria and viruses that can contribute to the disease that we see in an upper respiratory tract infection in cats. This video is primarily gonna focus on the feline rhinotracheitis virus as well as the feline Khaleesi virus because those are the two most common causes. I'm going to make a separate video for uh, chlamydophilia felis, otherwise known as just chlamydia, and that's just because there's a little bit more to it and it's a little more complicated. So how does a cat get one of these two viruses or both of these viruses in some cases? Well, it's usually transmitted through small droplets from either a sneeze or a cough that are transmitted through the air to another cat directly. However, some cats will actually pick these up from fomites, which a fomite is a fancy word for an object that is going to transmit the disease from an animal to another animal. And in this case, a fomite is going to be something like a water bowl, a cat tree, even a person that came in contact with one of these viruses directly and then transmitted directly to another cat. Uh, there's a whole host of things that can spread this disease in the environment. 
one of the most challenging things with getting rid of this virus is that are these one of the most challenging things about getting rid of these two viruses, especially when they're working together, is that often a cat is going to be shedding this virus for weeks to months after and during recovery. So they're going to be shedding this virus for a very, very long time and a long period of time. And so their chance of giving it to another cat is very, very high. The most commonly we see this being a problem in young kittens as they have a weaker immune system, often are being exposed to many different pathogens all at once and often are very stressed because of just all of the new things of being a new live animal out in this world. But sometimes we'll see older cats that develop recurrent infection, infections or even their first infection as well. And sometimes we see cats that have had this in the past have a recurrence when they're stressed. So a stressful event such as they get moved, you bring a new animal in, there's a new baby in the house. Most of the time these are going to be highly stressful events. But the problem with cats is they get stressed very easily. And so sometimes we'll see recurrence for no apparent reason that's easily identifiable, but it's usually some sort of stress that you just have to dig far enough back to find. And one of the reasons that this happens and one of the reasons that this is most challenging to treat and get rid of is that the feline rhinotracheitis virus is a herpes virus. So just like the cold sore in people, a herpes virus is able to integrate into the DNA of their host or into the genome of their host. And just like in a cold sore, if you're stressed, if you have a really rough time, you're not eating enough, you're not sleeping enough, you're not drinking enough, water, all of those things can contribute to this virus basically having a recurrence. So the immune system under normal circumstances keeps a herpes virus under control by just killing off the few vi viral particles that are being expressed from the cells that have the DNA of this virus integrated into the host genome. But in the case of stress, stress is going to decrease the immune system's ability to fight off infections. And the herpes virus is actually going to be able to reproduce rapidly and have a recurrence and a recurrent infection. A lot of times these aren't as bad as the initial infection, but sometimes in in cases where the immune system is really knocked down, they actually can be. So this ends part one of this video series. I'm going to break this up just because it got a little bit long. And so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for the next one, which will go up on Friday. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little bell and you will be notified when it is up. And we will conclude this series. Once it is up, the second video is going to be put up probably in a card over here. So see you guys in the next video.